Hello, this is Mike Fauché, and today I'd like to round off my QNAP series by talking about their mobile apps. Hope you enjoy the video. Today I want to spend a little bit of time talking about some of the QNAP mobile apps, primarily QFile, QManager, and QSync. So those are the ones that I use the most and thought maybe they'd be of most benefit to everybody. With that said, let's get started and talk about the first app, which is I'm going to talk about QManager. Okay, so let's start, um, let's get into QManager a little bit so we can kind of go over what it's for. And QManager is primarily an app that allows you to monitor the status of your, of your uh, NAS units. Um, it's especially helpful if you're in different environments where you have, um, you know, issues with temperature or if you're uh, a lot of multi-users or if you just want to see the status of what's going on just out of plain curiosity just to keep an eye on things so as you can see here I actually have two NAS units listed and I'm going to walk you through the process of actually adding a NAS so it's pretty straightforward so first we um, click on add NAS and it's going to search for basically everything that I have on my network and I'm going to pick the one that I has that I have not added before and it's going to prompt me for the credentials. Now you can use a username or you can use the admin. In my case, I'm just going to use the admin account. Okay, then we're going to hit save. And there you see it's connected. So it's asking me if I want to receive notifications. And in my case, I, I don't right now. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that alone. So if we go through some of the various options, we have a resource monitor. This will tell me, it'll give me the status of the CPU, the system, and the individual hard drives. It'll show me the temperatures, um, which at times can be important, but depending on where you live. I've had issues with temperature before where I've actually had to uh, keep an eye on things because I like things, I don't like things to run really hot. So I, you know, I control my fans manually so I can actually increase them. And obviously if you run your, your fans automatically, you probably don't have to worry about it too much. But it's still good to keep an eye on things. Um, it will also show me background tasks. Shows me that I have no background task, tasks. And here under system services is you have an option to actually... Um, enable or disable various features that are built into the NAS, such as iTunes server, uh, DLNA server, your media library, web server, FTP service, all of which I have disabled on this particular unit. Um, the App Center kind of gives you an overview of the apps that you have installed on your device. Um, kind of gives you an overview. They may or may not be running right now or they may not be active. As you can see, the photo station is not started. You have system logs, uh, backup station. If you have any backup set up, this will kind of give you an overview. Download station is something that I actually don't use and actually had problems with, so I make sure that that's disabled at all times. So again, this is really just a monitoring app. It's um, just helps you to keep an eye on things to make sure things are operational and working the way that you want. The one I tend to navigate to most is the resource center. That kind of tells me everything that's going on. And if you notice down here, it gives you the, the status of the uh, system fan as well. Um, one of the things I didn't mention on the first round is you have some tabs down at the bottom which kind of walk you through your CPU, your RAM, your storage, and bandwidth that you're using at the time and how your um, processes are allocating as far as resources go. So it gives you a really a nice overview of kind of what's going on. Okay, so let's move into the next uh, QNAP app, which is the QFile app. And this is where, this is probably one of the more useful apps in terms of, you know, your day-to-day -day usage between your either iPad or phone in your NAS unit. Um, so let's go ahead and launch that. You're kind of greeted with a sort of familiar theme across the apps and you're going to select the NAS unit. So I'll 
pick that one. And here you get a listing of basically everything that's on your NAS. And you'll uh, not only get to view, but we'll get to actually manipulate some files here. So let's um, take a quick look at a few things that we can do. So I'm going to go ahead and select photos just uh, as a starting point. And here you're kind of greeted with kind of again your subdirectory folder structure and any files you might have there. So I'm going to go ahead and pick, uh, just for fun, I'll pick this particular folder. And here you get to see, you know, again a listing of your files and folders that are in there. Now, when you tap on the triple dots, you're greeted with some options of how you can manipulate that file or manage that file. So um, most of these are pretty standard on iOS devices, but you have a few additional options. So here you can actually open the file, which we're not interested in right now. Um, I can send a copy, so I can set up a shared folder and send a copy. I can um, save the file to the camera roll, um, and I can copy, move, and delete or encrypt the file. And these are, you know, extremely powerful tools given that you're doing this from an iPad or a tablet of some kind or a phone of some kind. For example, this is kind of a garbage file. So if I, I hit the uh, triple dots there and I can go over to delete, I can delete that file and it's kind of gone. This is a free app that comes with your, um, your NAS unit. I also wanted to point out there's actually two versions of this application. There's a standard Q file and there's a Q file HD. Uh, most, of the, most of the changes are actually in the interface and more of the look and feel. They basically do the same thing. They allow, to, allow you to manipulate the files that are on your NAS unit. And that's, that's the punchline is you want to be able to get on there, get a file, copy it, and move on. Now there's one other thing I wanted to point out too is we're going to get into that on the next application which is actually a desktop application and that's the QSync. So if I go ahead and tap on QSync I'm, I'm uh, greeted with some files and folders that happen to be in my QSync directory and basically what these do is this is a folder very similar to Dropbox or any of the other uh, auto sync folders where if you drop something in there um, you can actually copy it across all your devices or gain access to it from all your devices and that's basically what we're looking at here is that there's a folder on that on, a, on my NAS that actually takes these files that I use as working files so that when I log in from a PC or or my desktop I get access to these files it's great for things like screenshots or you know, files you're working on, much the same as you would use for Dropbox uh, or Google Drive without the actual cloud storage. You're actually using, you know, a folder that you're sharing just amongst yourselves. So it's a really useful tool. I could take a screenshot and actually when I copy it to this, to the QSync folder, it will actually be distributed across all of my systems that are logged into QSync. And this is user-based, so if you're logged in as a particular user, you'll only see the files that that particular user um, can see um, or has created. It's not a shared folder across everybody. It's only a shared folder across that user. So when I log into my system, I see only these files because it is tied to the user. So it's important because it's very useful that way. So if other people in your family are on QSync as well, or they've logged in, they're, they're not going to play with your files. They're going to play with theirs. Okay, and kind of going and leading into the next topic, which is the QSync itself. Um, this is actually a, set up as a desktop application. So I'm going to walk you through how to set that up and how to get the um, your data from one from your desktop to the, the NAS unit and how all that works. Okay, let's get into QSync. Um, this is a multi-part process, so I'm gonna start with setting up the actual service because in order for this to work, you actually have to set up the um, service in your NAS. So if you go to a, an app called QSync Central, and if it's not installed, you can go ahead and install it through the App Center. Let's go ahead and click on it. 
and it launches the main interface. So the first thing you obviously have to do is enable the service. So once you enable the service, um, we're going to go through some basic configuration and then you'll, I'll walk you through the, the applications. So the first thing you'll notice is there's not much to set here other than there are links to the apps. So if you wanted to install one of the QSync clients on the desktop or a mobile device, this is where you would actually do it. So there's a client for Windows, Mac, and then you'll go to the individual app stores if you want to download the um, QFile client, which is the same client we just discussed here on the previous portion of this video. Let's go through the different options of configuring this. There's, like I said, there's really not much to do here other than enabling the service. But under the management console, you have an option of letting each user uh, provide its uh, his or her own customization when, within the utility, or you can have a central management. So again, it depends on your particular needs. For me, I use the the default, which is user customization. So here under users, you have a couple things. Um, number one, it'll show you who's online right now. Um, it'll give you a list of all of the users. So you can manage your users from here if you want to. By default, all users, once you enable the service, will have a QSync folder. Um, this just shows you who's online and who's not. So I can also create a user from here. So if you have somebody that's that you want to add, that's you know you can either go to the user panel or you can do it from here. I prefer to do everything from the user panel, but you can do it from here if you'd like. Now the devices under the devices tab, you'll see here that. Um, You'll see it has a listing of all of the um, devices that you have the application installed on. So this will give you the, kind of a bird's eye view of everything that you have the client on. There's an event log, which is, you know, I don't really look at event logs too much, but it's there. And this team folder app is sort of interesting. This is where it allows you to actually set up a team folder for, you know, your, all of your users to share. And then here's your list of shared folders. So to get to your client, you're going to download the client application again, depending on what you have, whether it's a mobile app or in this case, it's windows and it will allow you to download and install the client. So once you install the client app, this is the main screen. This is where we're actually going to set up the pairs and actually create the link between the NAS and this particular computer. Your default on the NAS will be the home directory with the QSync folder and the home is basically the user. So, so the option, once you get this configuration is we have a few things here that we can take a look at. Once this has been set up um, and you've established the link, you want, you're gonna wanna set up for this particular user the paired folders and this is what's really critical in terms of getting the things to sync is that you want to establish a um, a sync pair now this will create a default configuration you just have the option of configuring it okay so if i wanted to create and, and modify my my paired folders i can actually go into view and manage paired folders and here's where i actually see my default configuration which is the home sync and then where I've set it up to go. So I've set it up to go to my D drive. Now, if I wanted to at any time, I can actually hit add. And it's gonna tell me that um, I need to create uh, and allow a, a specific folder. It would be created in this folder by actually just checking different boxes off. So if I've created and if I've checked those boxes off, it will then allow me to add those to the shared folder. Now I haven't shared any other folders in terms of QSync, so I don't have anything listed here. Uh, but that's how you would do it. This is something that you would do on each client. Um, it's basically once you create and log into the, once you've installed the client, you're basically going to configure the folder for that particular client of where you want the default QSync folder to be synced to. So just to be clear, um, let me pull this back up here. Just to be clear, this is the folder that you're not going to change. This is the folder under, under the paired folder that's client specific. So you can have a different folder for each client 
depending on that particular computer's or mobile device's configuration. Um, but this, this here doesn't change because that's what actually is managed by the QSync Central. So I hope that makes sense. Um, now, there's one other thing I want to talk about, and I'm only going to touch on it briefly. Uh, I'm going to go back over to... So if I look at QSync Central, it gives me the options, um, again, besides the clients. There's one other thing I want to talk about, and that's down here under the My QNAP Cloud. You do have the ability to attach this to a um, allow a synchronization to take place over the internet. I'm not going to cover that in this video. That's going to be a separate video because there's a lot of little moving pieces in this thing. And personally, I don't use it. Um, and the reason I don't use it is because I use a VPN on my external clients that are outside of my network. So once I get to work or another location, I actually connect up to my home network via a VPN as opposed to using an intermediary cloud connection. Basically a pass-through. You're not actually storing your data on the cloud. You're using it as a connector. I will demonstrate in a later video how to use it or how to set it up. So I hope that makes sense. I hope you've kind of got a better sense for some of the applications that they um, that they support. And you know, once you get it configured, though, it works flawlessly, and it's a really really useful tool for for sharing files. Okay, now that we've actually covered the highlights of the application, I want to just show you real quick how kind of how it works. So what I've got here is um, two screens. Um, looking straight straight into my file station, so I'm looking at, at one of my NAS units, and what I'm going to do is take a couple of files, and I'm going to go ahead and copy those. So I'm going to copy those files, and I'm going to go down into my QSync directory, and I have actually logged in as a user, so I'm not logged in as the admin. And what I'm going to do here is actually paste these files into this folder. This is a standard warning screen. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in. It's going to take a second or two. And there's the two files, test one and test, that have been put in here. Now if you look over, if you give it a second, you'll now see that on the on my client screen for my desktop, those files have been copied. And of course they've been copied to every other system that has the client installed. So it's pretty much a, a brain dead process after you get it configured and set up. I hope that gives you an overview of the client applications and the QSync um, in general of how it works. And certainly should take advantage of it if you already own a NAS. It's a, there's no cost to doing it. Anyway, um, that's pretty much the overview. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And as always, if you haven't already done so, subscribe and click that notifications icon. And we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.